you know, when you see the battles Mob face, like the bosses he faces throughout the series, they always have some sort of connection to him. Like when he first fought Hanazawa, Hanazawa was, was someone who would manipulate his power opposite to him, someone who would only rely on himself, but only rely on his powers to get what he wanted. Saw himself as the star, the main character, and he didn't need to do anything else to prove that. Ma proved them wrong because of that, and yet Ma learned something. He lost control and felt sorry for himself, but learned to do better. Then at the end, when he fought Scar, one of the leaders of Scar, he learned that he had to bury, carry everything himself. It's okay to run away and leave it to the adults, because he's still a child. Then there is the leader of Claw, where someone, no wait, before then, the ghost dude, the, the, the exorcist guy, who was also a hitman, he himself was dealing with a world where, you know, in his position, he could have been easily bullied and tormented for the rest of his life, but he was blessed to be put in a situation, whether he had powers or not, where he was surrounded surround by people who encouraged him to do better, to encourage him and cheer him on when he had a goal in mind. The Body Improvement Club, the the, ES, the Alien Club, all they do is play video games and eat snacks. You know, even a good brother. You know, he had those people around him to really cheer him on and encourage him to do better. Then, he has the fight with the leader of Call, where someone, where Mob could become if he were to grow up, well, he is going to grow up, but, but he could grow up to be, you know, someone that sees himself as a god, see himself as someone only he can control the world because of the power he has. You know, he looked around to see if anyone was out there stronger than him. No one was out there until he met Mob. But now we're dealing with a new kind of boss where... Once again, Bob is being attacked in a way where he is not that comfortable dealing with. If you haven't realized, Bob can beat anyone in a physical or in a psychic attack any day of the week. But when it comes to his mind, mainly his heart, it's an entirely different story. He doesn't seem that he can face it very well. You know, the mental st stroll that's being taken on to him. You know, he's fighting and fighting, even fighting Hanazawa, which did a good put up with a fight resisting his temple's influence. But sooner or later, he succumbed to it. And Mob is just constantly fighting against it. But as he's getting fighting all the other temple clones and everything, you see him slowly just fading out, man. He's fading out. But even then, he's still keeping up because. He has more power. And have you seen him reach 100% until the very end of the episode? He was slowly reaching it. It was rising bit by bit. It rises when you first saw Hanzawa, then Persuasion, then him using Sabomi. And I also want to talk about also, there's a lot to talk about in this episode. Not, even though it was only on one scene, it was just a conversation that was really going on, that really was pushing. The, the animation was good, but it was mainly that conversation, the talk. The exchanging of words is what really pushed this episode to make it really great, by the way. You know, there's multiple things, especially understanding Sabomi. Like, I'm trying to figure out what kind of character Sabomi is. And, you know, she's always been the MacGuffin, you know, the goal. The entire series, Mob wants to go out with Sabomi. And he's trying to find a way to do it by improving upon himself. And since Denbo was able to connect to her mind, he realizes... What kind of person Sabomi is, which I was partially right in my first opinion on when Ma was going giga chad mode. <laughs> it turns out that, yeah, um, she's a character that's very strong will, who sees value in herself, and she compares that value around to others. You know, she sees herself as this high standard person, so she has those standards. You know, you can't just be around Sabomi, okay? That's just how she is, you know. I guess when she was playing hide and go seek, she left. I guess I say hey, this is beneath me, so I'm gonna leave. <laughs> like wow, Sabomi. Or we know she realized Mob had stagger powers as a child. 
when they're little kids. She says it's all he can do. It's all he relies on, you know. This is kind of boring. It's all you can do. It's all you rely on. So I'm out of here. But as you notice throughout the series, when Mob was improving himself, she was slowly starting to be impressed. Mob was creating his own value. If you couldn't tell, you know, his self-confidence, him seeing value of himself, being what he can be, pushing himself to the limit, having a goal, seeing in mind, women love it when their partner has a dream, may that be male or female. They love it when it, their partner has a dream, a goal, a sign of ambition, of strong ambition, you know, an initiative, one would say. It really impresses them. Like, okay, the guy got something going, you know? And it will encourage them and they would want to support it and they would like be supported in return in their own dream. That's how life is sometimes, you know? A support system. So, I have a better understanding of Sabomi now than I did before. And it's good since this is the last season. So I'm, I'm glad that we're having this better understanding. So Bomi's always just been this mystery to me. I'm like, is she just a girl we don't understand? Or is she just a total bitch? We don't know. But either way, as it could be funny. I was always thinking, what if Mob does all these amazing things, finally is proving upon himself, only to find out Sabomi isn't what he truly wanted when he finally goes out of her. If that ever happens, you know, that will be interesting. But we don't get to see that just yet. So, she's being peeled open like an onion layer, <laughs> and we're understanding her bit by bit, which is nice. Of course, we have a conversation with Dempo, talking about, you know, you know, a lot of people argue with the hive mind collective when it comes to world peace. We're always trying to say we're striving for world peace, and then you have this kind of writer who will come around and say, okay, what if I make it where everyone thinks and feel the same way? Like ant colonies or any other sort of um, colony that thinks and does the same thing. They all have their work. They all have their purpose and position that they feel in their lives. And they do it without question. And of course, there's still conflict with those colonies. But if it's just one big one at one colony, it can work. Especially with Dimple. You know, he spread the tree around, spreading the influence by touching the branches or eating a piece of it. And then they'll get overwhelmed by emotions through it, even without eating or touching anything part of the broccoli, which is the reason why Reagan got influenced as well. Okay, okay, that's good to know. You know, I'm glad they cracked that open. It's like, when did that happen? So that's good to know. Next is, is what he's doing really bad. You know, people are always craving for world peace, but what if this is really the only way to get it? Think about that for a second. We all don't like this idea because we just don't like being told what to do. Because of that, I don't think there will, there will be world peace. Because we want this thing where it's like it's like a give and take thing. Like you want this, but it seems like you're not willing to give up this in order to have this. So therefore, you may never get it. What if the only way for world peace is for us all give up our free will? We're still self consciously going around doing being ourselves, doing what we do. But we're being controlled and influenced by a way. And a lot of people don't like that because they like their own free will. But like, I don't want one telling me what to do and stuff. And because of that, we have this kind of predicament. And it, it, it piqued my interest too about that entire thing I was thinking about. You know, maybe that is the only way to world peace it is through this hive mind collective. You know, of think and feel as one, like the LGM from Buzz Lightyear. Not Lightyear, not that crappy Lightyear. I think I'm going to make a video about that one day. But anyways, I'm off topic. <sighs> um, but Mob, in a way, can't really fix the argument, saying that you're brainwashing people. But they like it. You know, whether they go back to their normal lives being like, oh man, this sucks. Waking up like, this sucks. I said, well, you're like, well, I feel great. I feel great. You know, sure, I lost my will, but I still feel great. I'm doing what I usually do, but I feel great. You know, it's a very tough war thing about myself. I see, like, is this really such a bad thing? You know, if all a person wants to do is to be prayed to. If Dimple only wants to do is be prayed to, 
every five um five minutes per day. That's it. And then everybody's do what they do. You know? No struggling, no hunger, no fighting and stuff. Just pray them five minutes a day. And then that's it. I you know, sometimes I'm conflicted. It's the free will thing that keeps us at it, isn't it? We don't want to let go of that free will. We don't want to become drones. But why? Because we're afraid that we'll lose who we are? That could be a very interesting question. You know, it really, like, hmm. Because I've had these conversations before, believe it or not, in some of my art classes, you know. Like, what well, were we willing to give for, for, you know, world peace? You know, we said we wanted, but can we truly accomplish it with the way who we are? You know, and this is kind of thinking, but it's going on long enough. I just really wanted to talk about this because I always like these things when it comes to free will or what it means to take peace and stuff. Philosophical talk, you know. I'm not saying I'm a, a connoisseur, but I've always been interested. I've always been interested in talking about philosophical things more than anything, even more than anime, manga, geek culture, politics, anything. I love talking about philosophy more than anything else. You know, us understanding ourselves and other things around us, you know, our perception. But anyways, this has been long enough. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, of course, hit that bell icon. This has been a on anime. Signing out.